Hi, I'm Dave Hughes and welcome to my shop. Today I want to show you some different uses for PSA sandpaper. Now what is PSA sandpaper? Well it was introduced several years ago and it's a rolled sandpaper and it's got a sticky back on it. The reason why they introduced this material was the vibrating sanders that were on the market had this kind of clunky and, and very difficult operation to load the sandpaper in. You'd have to flick this lever open, take your sandpaper, and basically hold it up in there while you operate and try to get it to fold back around the sander. And in all honesty, it was very, very difficult and challenging to use. So they introduced the PSA sandpaper that you can just tear the sheet off. It's exactly the same width of that quarter sheet sander or half sheet sander, and basically just peel and stick it right onto your sander. No more messing around with those, those uh, clumsy clamps that hold the sandpaper in place. But a lot of you guys think that's the only use for that. Well, there are a lot of other uses that will make this incredibly handy for you in your shop, and today I'd like to take some time to show you what they are. Let's first start out over here on my granite block. Now, a lot of you like to hone your own chisels like I do, uh, and you might have a granite block. If you don't have one of these, go down to your uh, local kitchen install place, and a lot of times they have the cutouts from the sink that will work just as, just as well. Now, the reason why I like this longer block is a 22-inch long surface, and the sandpaper, I can stretch it all the way across that length if I'm trying to flatten out my hand planes or do any, any large projects, but also if I'm working on smaller projects. Now, what I've done is I've already cut a piece of this. You can see how easy it peels and sticks back onto that stone. Uh, and essentially, it allows me to work this and rehone that edge and keep super razor sharp edges. I found it real, real nice to be able to hone my chisel and plane irons in, in my shop. Now, from there, let me show you another way we can use this. Um, this is a little box that I've been working on, uh, putting dovetails on it. I'm just about completed with it. Um, but when you glue up your dovetails, you have to work quickly. A lot of times the glue will have a tendency to slop around a little bit on you. And out here on the outside edge, it's very easy to sand away. It's this inside corner that becomes very challenging to get that extra glue that seeped out of there. And I try to wipe most of it up as quick as possible, but inadvertently there'll be a little bit left and that will always show through when you're staining. Now most of you would take just a standard piece of sandpaper, fold it up in half, and try to work that back and forth to get rid of it. You might even try that vibrating sander to get inside there. But let me show you an easier way. What I've done is, I've taken a piece of hardwood, oak or maple works well, a very fine saw blade, and I've ripped that down to about three inches wide. That will give you a super, super crisp edge, and be careful, that edge is very sharp. And what I've done now is I've taken a piece of my 120 grit uh, sandpaper, and I've stuck it onto that block. And you notice right here how crisp and clean this corner is, and that's what I'm gonna use to sand that inside corner. Now here's the trick to get that super clean, crisp corner. Place the sandpaper on the bottom and place that on a flat surface and basically roll that over, fold it over the edge and fold it over that edge again. And what that does is it creases the sandpaper to that super crisp corner and you can see how nice that stuck to that block, made it real simple. And now I've got a perfectly flat, perfectly square, sharp corner, which now when I work on that inside edge, you can see how that goes right up inside that corner there which makes this very easy for me to go ahead and do my sanding and get rid of that excess glue. I can go across or I can be basically sand in the direction of the grain right up to that edge without wearing out my fingers getting rid of all that excess glue. This is an incredible handy way to sand inside those corners. It also works well because I've got a flat surface. If I'm trying to flatten out something on a surface, it gives me that perfectly flat block. And notice how the sandpaper isn't twisting off the block. Now I also like to use this same exact method for knocking off sharp edges. It sort of works like, like a, um, a rasp or a file, and I can actually come in there and knock off those edges, and the sandpaper doesn't load up. That's one of the nice features about that non-loading abrasives. Now here's another handy use for it. Uh, let's say you're doing a, a little shelf bracket support or some scrolling work and you've got this inside shape that you need to sand. Again, a lot of you guys will take regular old sandpaper and try to roll it up and get in there to sand it out, which takes a lot of time. Let me show you an easier way. 
I've taken just a standard one inch dowel rod like this. I've cut a piece of 150 grit sandpaper and I wrapped it around that rod. And essentially it adheres to that and will peel right off, but it allows me to come inside that hole and work that shape back and forth and I can twist it and work it around until I have an absolutely perfectly smooth surface on the inside edge. By using a one inch dowel rod, I also do not deform that perfect circle that I have on my project. Now here's one that I really hate sanding and it's very challenging. If you guys have ever made raised panels like this, sanding these panels is very difficult to do and getting the detail on these inside edges before we assemble it is also very difficult to do. Raised panels or moldings, trim moldings like you see here, also another thing that I really hate sanding. Now a few years back, they introduced this product which is kind of neat. Um, these are foam sanders. Uh, you can buy them in packs of five or ten, and they have different shapes to them, and they basically take a, uh, a PSA back sandpaper. It's a smooth surface on there, which allows the paper to release, and we can actually take that same PSA abrasive here and sand our moldings and our raised panel doors. But then I've got to buy uh, these shapes, and they're kind of expensive. I think they sell for about $19 for a set of these things. Um, but I started looking at them and I looked at that foam material and I thought, I've seen that before. Well, I have. Where did I see it at? My local home center. Let me show you something here. This is the insulation uh, piping that you put on your copper pipes in your house and it's made from the same material and it's got the same finish on it. So why not use this? Um, I paid 99 cents for this piece and you can see how long it is and how much I can get out of it. Uh, it cuts real easily with the scissors. So all I'm going to do is cut a small piece off of it, like you see right here, and I could take this PSA sandpaper and essentially just wrap it right around there if I want to, to get a full round shape. I can take my scissors and I can split this down the middle also uh, and create half moon shapes and different sharp corners that the sandpaper would adhere to. Or I can cut it one more time for real small shapes like I've done right here. Now here's a small piece that I've done. You can see how the sandpaper just rolls right off of it. I've got a nice, clean, crisp, sharp corner. I roll that PSA sandpaper around there and look, I get a nice stiff piece of sandpaper and it's not gonna move around on me. So this little detail you see right here becomes a very simple thing to sand just like it would be on a raised panel door. Now to do this longer shape, I've cut one and split it in half. What we're going to do with this, as you can see, we peel back the corner. And that is the beauty about this uh, type of material that we have here, is that it is a peel and stick backing, which means I don't have to worry about sawdust getting on here and ruining the adhesion. Uh, it's protected until I'm ready for it. I'm going to place that right on top of that, push it down. You can see I've got that nice curved shape now, and that's going to allow me to come in here and really sand that profile without it really wearing on my hands. It makes it incredibly easy to do all of your sanding projects. Whether you're working on molding, raised panel doors, drawer boxes, or sharpening, I think you're going to be able to find multiple uses for this type of material in your shop. I'm Dave Hughes, and thanks for watching.